Hey everyone, welcome back to another Tic Tac Tyco. This week's video is very straightforward. I'm going to take two types of striking commonly found in Western percussion and talk about what they are, how to do them, and how to apply them to Tyco. Let's go. A lot of Western percussion techniques are difficult to do on taiko, not impossible. Well, let me say more difficult to do on taiko. That's a better term. With Western percussion, you have drums like snare drums or toms with synthetic, thinner, higher pitched heads that have a really, really incredible amount of bounce. And the drumsticks are usually smaller and lighter as well compared to taiko, which in general, larger drums, thicker heads, larger bachi. It's harder to make those techniques work as well. But you might find a shimai daiko that's tied really tight, either by bolt or by rope. You might find an okedo with a really thin head that's also tied really tight. And there's different kinds of bachi. There's lighter and smaller, there's less dense, and there's also tapered bachi as well. So while taiko can't compete with Western percussion in terms of some of the techniques and rudiments that it has, there's definitely elements and things that we can adopt or take a look at and see how we can use in our taiko playing. The first technique I want to talk about is the buzz. A buzz might look like this. Now, I'm pretty sure if I said, hey, try that, most if not all of you would be able to do it, but I'm gonna break it down just in case, maybe give you some extra ideas or some advice if you are having trouble. If I have my bocce just ready to hit, I'm holding it with a little bit of tension, and I let go, what do you think would happen? Let's find out. So it hits and most of the energy goes into or through the drum head. Some of the energy bounces off the drum head, which propels the bocce tip back up. But since most of it has gone through, what's left is a small percentage, and then it repeats, and each time gets smaller and smaller, which is, I'm sure, what you guessed would have happened. What we want to do with a buzz is to make this happen in a small, tightly compact container and, and do it at will. I'm going to start in a horizontal position to the floor, more or less, neutral, let's say neutral. And I'm not just going to let go because I have no control over it and it's da -da -da bounces all over the place. I want to throw it a bit forward, just like I was going to strike. I'm giving it some um, momentum. And then I'm going to hold it against the head. But I'm allowing it to bounce a little bit. And this is, this is that gray area where you want to be careful. If you press too hard, it, all the energy goes into the drum. It doesn't have a bounce, which you need multiple bounces to get the buzz. So I'm pushing, but I'm not pressing. I'm sort of forcing it in and holding it within that container. And it's good to experiment how fast do you throw that initial uh, motion? How tightly do you squeeze afterwards? I could explain this for 20 minutes, but really do it a couple of times and you'll start to feel, oh, that's too much or that's too little. So I'm not gonna waste your time. Best thing you can do is to try it yourself. One note that's important is to realize the buzz is not a technique that's about volume. If you try to put a lot of force into it in the beginning, you're gonna get a really loud initial attack and then it's going to decay quickly. So it's going to sound, um, it'll sound like this. It's not to say that's bad. You might want that. But in general, the buzz tends to be more, like I said, a tightly packed container where you have more notes within the same general sphere rather than a note way up here, then a note here, then a note down here. Again, something you might want to do as an effect, but the normal buzz should be a little more even, a little more round. Something else I noticed, uh, especially comparing the regular hit and a buzz, is what my wrist is doing or not doing. When I'm striking normally, my wrist is bending. It's doing most of the work. 
when I'm doing the buzz, my wrist is almost doing nothing. It's more arm. I'm almost thinking going down rather than thinking of letting it bounce back. So, so watching my wrist, it does what my wrist normally does. But when I bounce, it's moving and it's not dead. But the difference between this motion, exaggerated a little bit, and this motion. Very different when you take the bocce out and you highlight the differences, yeah? In fact, it's a pretty good drill to try maybe four hits and four buzzes to really feel what the difference is. One last thing about the buzz. This is really useful if you're doing more than one in a row, but you can also still find a use for it if you're just doing one. And that is pulling or raking the bocce towards you. This is what I mean. It's a difference between and so there's almost this, I don't know, pawing or dragging motion. I can think of a lot of synonyms. Normally when striking, it's usually not a good idea to pull the elbows back to do this. This is a very common thing among a lot of newer taiko players. I mean, this feels really comfortable, but it's really hard to generate a lot of good power and ergonomics, and it's hard to improve on this sort of feel. With the buzz, however, I can use this extra motion, this extra momentum, and it's not necessarily going to make it louder, but I feel like it's making more uh, bounces along the way. And even if it's only adding a little bit, I feel it. For me, I like to go in, but that same logic says I can also go out as well. I just feel like once I start getting further out, I have a lot less fine motor control and closer in is the opposite. I have a lot more. So I like to do it that way. So I say experiment, try some stationary and then try some coming towards you and heck, try some going away. Why not? And the second technique for this week is even easier than the buzz and that's the press with a normal strike. You're aiming just a bit below the surface or the, the head, or you want to penetrate and get a little bit underneath to deliver the sound into the drum. With the buzz, you're actually just aiming for the head because any force going through the head is force that's not coming back up and it means less bounces for your buzz. But the press is a combination of the both, now that I think about it. You're trying to press through the head but you want some, some bouncing in there. It's just that the act of pressing is limiting the amount of bouncing that you're getting. Anyone can do a press. That's a press. As you can see, like I did with the buzz before, my wrist is hardly doing anything. I'm actually holding a lot more tension than I'm comfortable with because I, I want to limit the bounce back. And it's a very, very, very tight buzz. So tight though that I differentiate it from the buzz and it is its own technique. It sounds and feels very different. And the last thing I want to say about the press is you have a, a small window of how much force, how much tension you want to have gripping. If I grip it really, really tight, like I've been doing, it's very, 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 uh, a very, very tight press. But if I start to open it up and loosen, uh, starting with just letting the, the fingers relax to letting go to almost letting go of the thumb and forefinger, you're going to hear how the press becomes less and less tight. There's a fine line between buzz and press, and if you want, you can start experimenting going from one to the other and back just to play with it.
okay, now you have these new toys, what do you do with them? I'm gonna give you two things that you can do with the buzz in the press. The first is to incorporate them or to make rolls from them. In Taiko, we have what are called single stroke rolls, meaning each hand hits once and alternates. And that's the Taiko roll. You can do a buzz roll by substituting the normal hits for a buzz. This takes a little bit of getting used to. What you're trying to do is, is try to make the containers as close to each other as you can and try not to have too much of an attack on each so that it's a much more smooth, general, gradual roll. You can also do a press roll, which is much closer to the regular single stroke roll than it is to the buzz roll, because the press has very little sustain, just like the normal hit. Two things about the buzz and press rolls. The first is that neither one of these is really meant for volume. These are nuanced techniques. I can play a regular taiko roll pretty loud. And it's a loud roll. But to do that with either one of these techniques, no, that's not gonna work. No, you lose the buzz. So knowing that helps you understand where you might put them in a taiko piece. And the second thing is kind of obvious. It takes practice. It takes practice to get good at just getting the technique itself, but then to be able to put them together and smooth things out takes a little bit more practice. So don't be discouraged if you're not quite getting it or if you're feeling like it's, you've got a very loud attack. You can whittle that down in time. The second thing you can do with either one of these is put them in taiko whether it's as a composer or as a soloist. Now, I could speak to length about when to put them in and what's good and what's not, and then I'm gonna to try to keep this pretty short. Wish me luck. As a soloist, whether it's improv or you scripted it, just realize like any good spice, a little goes a long way. So if you've got a lot going on, I mean, it's, it's a lot of spice in someone's face. Use a little bit. Be smart uh, and be intentional about where you want to put it. It can have a lot of impact. It can be the thing that sort of, oh, kind of wakes the audience up. Not that they're sleeping, but you know, if you've got 15 solos and someone does one technique that's a little different, oh, hey, what was that? I'm interested now. As a composer, I can't tell you what you should and shouldn't do. I'm not the expert. But when it comes to these nuanced techniques, you probably want to be more intentional about where you put them. I mean, you can put that anywhere, but if you're putting that on top of somebody hitting the odaiko, this is not going to be heard. And I have actually seen, upon multiple watchings, some taiko pieces that have other kind of alternative techniques like this, and they get lost, completely lost, in the the cacophony of sounds that the taiko ensemble is playing. So if you want to put this stuff in, do it. Absolutely do it. Just be aware where it is and what else is going on so that those things have a lot of impact. And there you have it, the buzz and the press. Like I said, this week's video is pretty straightforward, but hopefully I've given you some inspiration and some ideas that are percolating in your head for you to use in your future taiko playing. If you like this video, let me know with a thumbs up don't forget to hit subscribe, and until next time, keep on practicing and be well.